What's up, everybody? Big Hurt Prison Talk. You're tuned into another episode. I'm here with the homie JC from Wrong to Strong. And, uh, you know, we've been kicking some stories around, and you guys ask a lot of questions. And a lot of you guys are inquisitive about foreign prisons. Now, my man here, he's been through a hell of a lot, and uh, he, he's been done time in Mexico. And so I figured I'd have him kind of give you guys uh, some, some background on what doing time in Mexico is like. JC, man, like, break it down to the people, man. They have no idea. <laughs> man, they, they don't know they got it made here, man. This is, uh, so first of all, what did you go to prison in Mexico for? Uh, a drug conspiracy. I was working for the cartel, and uh, I got picked up. Oh, shit. And, um, you know, at first I thought it was... Uh, it was gonna be nothing because I got, got caught with a lot of weed, and I was like, "Oh, it's just you know, it's a smack in the smack in the wrist. That's it." But I didn't know that in Mexico, the minimum sentence for a drug case is ten years. Damn, Damn for any any drug? Any drug. Weed, methamphetamine, coke. Yep, that's ten years. Damn. No matter in the door. That's what you're getting. That's you. You might as well just. And do you do half time or? Two thirds. One hundred percent of the time. Ooh, ten years. Ten years. Shit. So there is no good time. There is no half time. There is no halfway houses. Ain't hey, none of that shit. So, you know, I got arrested, and I'll never forget that day, man. They big black door opened it up, threw me in there, slammed it, and I turn around and I look at the guard, and I'm like, "Where's where's my cell?" Because I had already done a little bit of American time. Yeah. He's like, buscale. That means, you know, go find a cell. And I was oh, like. So when they open it up, you just, just yeah. go into a big ass place? Yeah. They oh, pretty much shit. just feed you to the lions. You know? Wow. So you don't get assigned shit. It ain't no no bunk roll or no bed roll or. Nothing. You ain't getting nothing. No laundry call. <laughs> nothing. You ain't getting nothing. What you got on? What you got on? <laughs> yep. So, you know, went in, you know, uh, I, I, if people have watched my uh, videos before, they know that I, I got stabbed for my for my Jordans, you know. Uh, oh, shit. A day Come later, why, he's like, give me your shoes. And I was like, try and take them, bitch. He, well, he took them. He stabbed me in the back, and oh, I gave shit. up my shoes. Because, uh, you know, I had never been hit with an ice pick like that before in the back. So I gave him my shoes, you know, went to the hospital, and... and I had never seen so many stabbings, uh, the people getting beat up with pipes. You know, I mean, they, the inmates had guns inside the, the prison. People walking around with guns in the prison. Guns. So this so, is like some prison break type shit, like in the TV. Like, literally, you're talking about people just have their own weapons and they just bailing around with them. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it was, to me, it was fucking crazy how much power the cartels had in there, how much you know, drugs, how much, you know, the, the guards very rarely were seen inside, you know. So wait, was this, had you already been sentenced or this is just why you're waiting to go? Sentence, unsentenced, everybody sits in the same place. Wow. So motherfuckers doing time and sitting there with dudes who are just waiting to get sentenced. Yep. And, you know, the, the, the crazy part is that, like, they put you on a newspaper, so you are, they already know who's coming. You know, like when I got caught, I sat at a little prison for about a week. So when I got there, they already know what I was there for. Who you wrote, who you got caught up with. Pretty much everything. And so needless to say, like the child molesters and the rapists. Oh, they get punished, huh? Oh, man. Like I'll, I'll never forget the day that I seen this. There was this dude that came in for raping a, a two-year-old little girl. Oh. Um, they literally stuck a whole broom up his ass. It look, I, I I still have the vision in my oh head my because it looked like a cartoon. Because you were like, "Where's the other? Oh, where's where's the rest of much the broom? Of it. Yeah, where's the rest of the broom?" And his hands, they had hit him with uh, metal pipes so many times that all the bones were broke on his hands. So he was trying to put his hands down, and it was just like, you know, it's even hard to explain because it didn't look real. Wow. So I mean. So they don't play no mess over there with that. No, oh, man, it, it was a vicious fucking place, man. It was, it was a bad fucking place. A lot of evil, a lot of, 
you know, and I've been on yards here where, you know, motherfuckers get banged up and, and, and it, but it's totally different. It's totally different when it's just, there's so no what, rules. So where the guards at during the time that everybody's just running like bedlam? They're outside. They're outside, around, outside. Pretty much the prisons over there are it's little cities inside of cities. Wow. So where, where did people go to get their food? I mean, where are they going? I mean, who, who's serving food? So pretty much um, there's restaurants in there. Restaurants there's, inside the... There's stores in there. Uh, it's a city. And you got to have money to buy stuff. Yep. You got to have money. And, and, you know, obviously the guys that are the biggest, the bigger guys in there with money, you know, have the most. You know, I, I, those four years that I did there were the four years that I never even checked the calendar because I was so drunk and high with women for years that all I remember when the American consul came and got me, I, I looked at how much time I had passed wow. by and four years I flew, flew by because. So what you had, like, like, what was your program in there, man? Get up, drink, get high, listen to fucking Mexican, like, I call it Mexican rap. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's the, all the songs that talk about drug dealers. And, you know, I hung around with one of the richest dudes in there. You know, uh, he took me under his wing. And, um, I mean, he used to get the guys that, you know, the mariachi. He yeah. used to get them in, and we used to just party. I mean, I went to the hospital twice for alcohol poisoning because Damn. two weeks straight, just drinking, you know, Patron doing coke uh all that in prison yeah and you said they also had women in there yeah sundays and thursdays so they bring the they bring the women in there and then dudes would know these are so-and-so's girls and they'd be up in there just having sex yep all day from six and six in the morning <laughs> to <laughs> six p.m what <laughs> what yeah, so, damn so it's, it's, that's it's, crazy man it's, like literally you think of people think of america they like see oh this is that, that's how it's, it's it's unreal. You wouldn't even believe it. No. Nah, I mean, my, my first daughter, Julia, she was actually, I met, I, I was with her mom while I was there, and she got, you know, pregnant while she was there. Wow, So, man. you know. Uh, I, I never, like, you know, when you see it on TV, you thinking, oh, man, and they got, like, people hanging out and kind of running their own little cliques and stuff, and, but that's for real. That's how shit is, like you said, it's own little world in there. It's own little world, man, and, and you know, and the, the, the thing is, is that if you don't have money, it could be a really rough place. You're either gonna have to, you know, wash somebody's laundry or clean the room or, or just hustle, you know. Um, that's one thing that a lot of people in there hustle big time, you know, yeah. they make stuff out of wood, uh, out of anything. I, I mean, Do the honestly, creative, they come up with all yeah, kind of stuff, huh? Garbage, I mean, <laughs> You'd be surprised the stuff that they fucking make out of there, man. It's, so it's, as far as like the sleeping thing, do they have, did you actually have a, a bed or cot or did they make something? I mean, where, I mean, how does that work? Well, if you're poor, you're going to sleep with a bunch of motherfuckers in one cell on the floor if you're poor. Yeah. If you have money, then you're going to have your own cell by yourself. If you're, you know, medium, I guess, what do you call it? Like uh, uh, not too rich, not yeah. too poor, you know, medium class, then you're going to have a roommate. So, you know... Uh, and who, who's controlling all that? Is that the, the, basically, the inmates are dictating who sleeps where? Well, there's always one shot caller in every unit. You know, there's always one inmate that calls... That They call him the machero. He runs the unit. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. So, like you said, ain't you're not getting free toothpaste. They ain't getting none of that. Yeah, either. nothing. Wow, nothing. man. You know, when I first got there, my people were taking care of me really well. And, and uh, I was getting about $1,000 a month. Uh, in Mexico, it was a lot of money. So, so you could live pretty good with that. I was living good. You know, I had my own cell. I had carpet in my cell. I had a big screen TV. And the cell? Yep. I was walking around with my Nike suits, you know, my windbreaker suits and my gold What the chains. hell? You know, so I, I was living really good. But um, uh, I started hanging around with this dude. He was really, he was really known. He was, he was a big-time drug dealer. I don't want to say his name. But yeah. he was known for smoking crack. And I started hanging around with him, and I got hooked on that shit. Oh. I got hooked on that shit. I ain't never seen money go through my fingers so fast uh. in my life. And <clears throat> I ended up living in a room with a, 20 guys because <coughs> I ran out of money. Wow. And after my people found out that I was using drugs. Cut you off. They cut me off. You know, um, <clears throat> it, was, it was hard, you know, but it was a learning experience because then I had to, like, wash people's clothes. 
I had to clean people's rooms. So you went from living the high life all the way down to the bottom, which over here people think the bottom, but it ain't shit compared to that bottom. Nah. Nah, when I got transferred to uh, Latuna Federal Prison in El Paso, Texas, at the time in the early 90s was a medium, um, I felt like I was in heaven, man. You know, I, I got transferred over and I was like, clean clothes. Wow. You got to take your clothes to the laundry mat, get it pressed, uh, food. Yeah. It, this is when I hit the feds. I, and I always tell the story. This is, this is when I hit the feds when the feds were actually made for the feds. Federal what, what, cases. What, what year was this? I want to say 94. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I didn't hit till 2000. And I remember an OG telling me in the 90s, it was like a different class. It was a different level of people there. These are like dudes who really were like mafia guys, you know, the, the Wall Street guys. Yeah, yeah, it, it, like, it wasn't all the stuff you have dude, now. When I, got to, when I got to like Latuna, they had one of the biggest heavy hitters from the Crips there, like a baller baller dude. Forgot his name. Yeah. But people walking around with bathrobes, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, coffee cups, you know, and yeah. they had the, 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 the soda machine still. I remember I heard they about the, that. The yeah, 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 yeah. And... You would go to breakfast and pick out whether you wanted waffles or pancakes, yep, bacon yep, yep. or sausage. Yep, yep. Chicken had, and waffles. They had uh, the Wendy burgers. They had the, Our burgers were from Wendy's. Yeah. So, yeah, the feds were like, back in them days, I mean, because I did time in, in that time, that's where I actually got plugged up really big time because my, my uh, cellmate uh, was somebody. Okay. And um, since I took care of them. That's when I left out of there. I pretty much graduated to a PhD after I left. Well, I, I tell people, man, going to the feds, depending on what you do with your time, is different than the state. You you go in there, you meet somebody, man, it changed your life. Yep. You, you know, know, literally. And that's what happened. You know, the, the dude was from Florida, from the cocaine cowboy days. Yeah. You know, he had a missing leg, and I used to take care of him. And when I came home, he made sure I was okay, and he changed my life overnight pretty much. Wow. You know, and... and um, that's, that's a whole different story. But, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, the feds were, you know, like I said, there was no there was no bloods in there. There and if and if there was, they were high ranking members. Like, yeah, big serious time, big dudes that they had picked up. Dude, yeah, you know, for a hundred keys. Yeah, shit like that. No gun charges. No. Yeah, cause they didn't even have really bank robbers in there back then. Nope. You know, it was very 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 different people, man. And, and I'm not gonna lie, like you know, nowadays the feds have. Oh, all fucking just, crackheads in there. Yeah, it's, it's not it, the same. It's, it's bad. It's bad, man. It ain't the same. It, it, there was even no gangs in well, there. Well, remember, I remember back there, they had like bocce ball, gardens. People would be, like you said, it was uh, tennis. It was different. People were actually civilized to exactly. some degree. You know, you could have stuff and people weren't like that type of mentality. I remember once I went out to the yard and they were playing poker. And they were gambling thousands of dollars. And these were all like big time dudes, you know what I mean? And I was like, shit, is that what you do when you're bored? <laughs> He's like, like, yeah, yeah. Play with know, thousands. 10 G's on the fucking table. Like, shit. like nothing. And I was like, you know, it, it was it was it was crazy, man, to see, you know, how much it had changed when I went back, you know. Now now, now putting that into perspective, because a lot of people wonder like, you know, what kind of money people are getting into, you know, making inside prison. And I know, like, it's changed. I, I know dudes who are making, like, 100 racks doing the tickets and stuff like that a year. But, like, when you were in there, what type of money did you see dudes making in prison? Because, like, you got guys in there where if these guys were in corporate world, they'd be multi-millionaire, billionaires, and they were already millionaires. But what type of stuff did you see that you could speak on that you see, like, guys, like, getting paper in there? Because I know guys, I know dude, some dudes in the feds, they were, they were papered out and taking care of people on the street. Yeah, I mean... It all comes down to, like, hustle, man. I mean, when I got in there and I knew that I wasn't going to have no money sent to me, I got on my hustle. I got into the kitchen. I already knew I already knew that I was going to be stealing meat all day, <laughs> every day. You the know. meat hustle. I yeah. know about the meat hustle. You know, and I was making about close to $800 a month. Yeah. But I was taking I was taking meat like there was no tomorrow. <laughs> You're making trips, hitting yeah. trips, huh? You know, and, and the guards used to make fun of me because the guards know what's yeah, up. Yeah. But if you if you're cool, they don't fuck with you. Yeah, they, they'll they, let you know they already know you're packing. Yeah, they yeah. already they already know that you're just trying to take care of business, man. That's right. So you know, um I used to I used to steal meat and milk and that's how I, I used to make money and that's how, you know, I used to 
you know, buy me my ice cream if yeah, I want yeah, ice cream yeah. in there. You know, take ben and care Jerry's of, ahead. Yeah, take yeah. care of my shit. But uh, there was people that were making way more. I mean, like the ticket hustle, the football game shit. Crazy money. Man, I had no idea. And I never got into that shit because you got to have a love for the sport to do yeah. that shit. Yeah. I, I, I don't I don't watch Follow all the shit. games and call it. Take out the whole kind of yeah, game. Yeah, you got to sit there and watch what the Sixers are, and players, this, yeah. he's hurt. And I was, that's too much fucking work, man. But, yeah, there was dudes in there making thousands of dollars on that shit, you yeah. know. And, and then you go to the dark world. I call it the dark world, the cigarettes. Oh, yes. You know, I had an OG that... He used to follow every single guard and wait for them to throw away that little roach. Yeah. He would pick it up, you know, save him, save him. And he would send $300 out every month to his kids wow. from that little hustle. From breaking down the tobacco. Yeah. You know, and, and it's crazy how much effort and time he put into it because he would literally follow them around the whole fucking yard wow. all day. Wow just to try and get that little roach but you know and that's why i tell everybody i was like if you even put just half of that like you said, energy into something on the street that's hot <laughs> dude you'd be rich you'd be like you said if a dude has that much time to watch and pick that and tear it apart to sell it man, wow no sky's the limit sky's the limit man so you know i get a lot of people that tell me they're like you know how the, how the fuck can you work 18 19 hour days and i'm like at the end of the day, you know, there's trainers where I work at, they've been doing that for nine years, and they're still doing the same thing. I don't plan to be doing it that's right, you nine plan. years later. I got a plan, man, and that's why I'm putting in the hours because when I release my book, when my online training takes off, when my YouTube channel takes off, I'm not going to be at the gym 24-7. I want to be doing other things. Traveling. This is yeah. all the energy that I'm putting in. It's just like when I was in there. Yeah. When I was in there hustling, Man, they, the guards used to make fun of me because I used to wear this, uh, they, those things for the hernias. Yeah, man. Yeah, those white Remember they, they make them like a little, yeah. like a little hook and yeah. you put and them I in pockets. Yeah, yeah. You know what's up? Yep, yep. <laughs> I would walk by and they would be like, Mr. Almanza, <laughs> what do you have yeah. on you? I'd be like, man, I just got like 20 milks, man. <laughs> and they'd be like, open up your shirt. I would have like 40 out there. <laughs> and they'd be like, really? Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, what? Leave half of them there. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, the way. yeah. You know, and on Friday nights, I would sit by myself because I would make cheesecakes too. Okay. I would make cheesecakes. I would make about 20 cheesecakes. I would get my little garbage container, put ice in it, put the sodas in there, put my cheesecakes in there, my milks. I would sit there while everybody's watching the movies. I would hustle my cheesecakes, yeah. the sodas for a stamp, the milks for a stamp, cheesecakes, six stamps. And I would just make money. I mean, yeah. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, that's what I did. Yeah. You yeah. know, I didn't have time. I had I had I had to make my own money. I, I didn't have people taking care of me. That's right. So, you know. No, I feel you, man. I know about like you said, the the bacon egg, egg and cheese sandwiches, they hustling, you but you moving those, the the pizzas, you know what I mean? It's like, dude, you you get creative, man. When you have to survive and you know, like you said, you don't have somebody just feeding you. Yeah. You and, know? And that's my biggest thing that I tell people, man. If you just put half, not even 100% of the energy because I get it and there you have nothing else to do. I yeah, get it. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. But if you put half of that fucking energy into whatever it is you want to do, oh, trust me. You, you, you're going to win. The sky's gonna win. the limit, sky's man. The limit, man. You know, and, and, and you know, uh, prison, you know, and I hate this. I hate, and I don't glorify it or nothing, man, but prison has taught me so many lives you know, skills, so many life stuff that my own family didn't teach me. You know, hygiene. Because, you know, you got to brush your teeth. You got to be clean in there. Because yeah. if not, your own people take care of you. Exactly. You ain't going to exactly. be a smelly motherfucker no. laying on your bed. No, like, no. It, 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 it's, if it wouldn't have been for prison, man, prison has taught me so many things in life that my own family didn't teach me that, you know, thank God I did the time, man. Yeah. And, you know, because who knows where the fuck I would have been at right now, <laughs> you know. But it's taught me a lot, man. And I wouldn't take it back, man, because it it, 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 it made me the man that I am today. And, and it's allowed you to now reach out to other people, man, and, and share that knowledge, which is changing lives. Exactly. So, hey, there you have it, man. JC, Wrong to Strong, Big Herc, Prison Talk. Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. Exclusively at FreshOutSeries.com.